What is up, YouTube? One and only True Neptune. What's... Lord have mercy. What's good, guys? It's your boy, Tinch on my I'm out of one. Don't, don't, don't cut me off. I gave you a amount of time to introduce yourself. You came here. Well, guys, it's True Neptune. I don't talk like that, so I don't well, know what I'm you're talking, talking about. Like that. I don't know what it's all about. That's how you talk. What, what is this? That's a symbol for Star Trek, the record label. Symbol for booty. I eat booty. That's what it is. You clearly, cool, you got you got the Just booty flakes on here. Yeah. Oh, I, I, don't, I know I don't eat booty. I ain't that type of person. But it was good, man. It's your boy, Tencho Mighty. The Mighty One. Now you may speak, sir. I speak whenever I want to speak. So you just spoke there but as I told you to speak. We already added to Mr. Nightmare, Three Let's... True Sleepover Horror Stories, Volume 3. So you did. You had sleep... Three. You had sleepovers? You, you, you were younger? These. I'm, boy, I know you used to do that. Back in your time, but I didn't have sleep on. First off, my mom went playing that shit. Second off, I ain't want a bunch of niggas in my room. They could have been sleepover with girls, guys. First off, sure. if it was some girls over there, they would have been sleeping in my sister's room. Oh, okay. Guess. Now, I, I can share some explicit story, but you got a problem. No, 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 really Let me tell y'all what's up, no, man. man. So... Come on, bro. We already... No, nah, man. Let me tell you what happened. One day, time, it was, I was eight years old. And it... <laughs> we were going to go ahead and start the video. <laughs> they sleep on the floor? They just got pictures for the... Uh, yeah, I was sleeping on the floor. Tell what sleep over there is. Dresser, sofa. I got to be up somewhere. Tyler and I used to have sleepovers all the time when we were kids. Always at his house, though, because he had the cool house. Back then, before cell phones and modern video games, kids actually used to do normal kid things. Like, for example, we both loved to play hide-and-seek at night. One time when we were nine, both our parents were going out for a night in Atlantic City. So they had my other cousin, Tyler's older brother, Joe, keep watch on us. An hour into the night, however, Joe told both of us he was going out and not to tell mom. <laughs> Tyler and Joe would commonly do this because it mutually benefited them. Tyler loved having the house to himself, and Joe hated staying home all night. By the time he left, it was already a little later in the night, like 9 o'clock. We had our dinner, so we decided it would be a good idea to play hide-and-seek. Their house was honestly massive, so it was always a lot of fun. I was hiding first. We started in the basement where Tyler would count. We had a rule that we couldn't use any house lights, only flashlights. Hell, the reason for this was because it just made Can't it use cooler. Can't use indeed. I tiptoed up the stairs, then up the next flight of stairs to the upstairs of the house. The upstairs had a whole other living area, along with three bedrooms. I chose to hide in one of the unused bedrooms. I buried myself between two big beanbag chairs and a blanket. Mm -hmm. I left the door open to avoid any suspicions. I heard creaking coming into the room. Lively footsteps. Tyler was now moving around the carpeted room. I could hear him. He went over to the closet and opened it. Then he opened the second closet. Silence. Then he walked over to the other side of the room. And he started opening the drawers to the desk, rummaging through them. Suddenly I heard Tyler's young, innocent voice calling my name up the stairs in a kind of mockingly tone to try and scare me. My mouth opened and literally started twitching when I put two and two together. I lifted the blanket slightly over my head to see what he was doing. But it wasn't Tyler. I knew right away based off the person's height. It was a much taller, fully grown man. It wasn't Joe, and it so wasn't scared. his dad. He perked up like a statue when he heard Tyler's voice, and I saw him duck into the corner of the room behind the small piece of wall that sticks out there. Tyler entered the room with his flashlight and kept saying my name over and over, slow and drawn out like. I was praying his light. What you would've did if you were in this situation? Man. How, how, how old I am? How old they said they was? I don't know, life at the age now? I'm swinging on that nigga. Oh, right? no, not now. I mean, you like. Now nah, he might hit with the whole clip. 
Now, bah, 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 you, bah. Okay, let's say you like 11 years old. Eleven. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's two. That's that's kind of grown man. It's, it's kind of older. I've been probably pissed on myself. That, but let's think about it. Okay, you come in the room calling me. I'm not finna give away none of my disguise. First off, until you get a little closer. First of all, eventually, when you when I come up to the room, the dude gonna come out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to think about it. When he come out, he come to get you because I'm going to be still over there hiding. And I'm going to be like, dang, man, dad. That's why it's better to save both of us. Just come from under the cover, start screaming. It's a man up here. Boy, if I come up under the cover, I'm coming straight past you full speed. <laughs> I know. Boop, boop. Let What's that know. first left hey, or right? I know. <laughs> I'm saying. But you got to let me know if somebody Let you know, man. You see me running, you run. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> you running for. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Boy, that dog. You know it's somebody. How many people? It wasn't three enough? It was just him and the other dude. Boy, you you better start running. That's all right. <laughs> Boy, we are down that road. All right, we're going to start the video back. This is 302. Nod reach over to the corner of the room. His light landed on me under the blanket. He may not have even seen me, but I still willingly came out and acted all defeated. Fake laughing and everything. I told him he won, put my arm around his back, and started nudging him out of the room. I kept the conversation as natural as possible until we were halfway down the stairs. That's when I dropped the bomb and told him there was someone in there with me and nudged him to run outside. See? Being Smart. the scared nine year olds we were, all we could do was run let him know. and ask the woman. You ain't let me know nothing. For us. I said, she did when, uh, What you want to think about it? The thing about it, when you see me run in fear, you going to run behind me. What? What? Did I tell you I got a roll at the surround a little sure bit? Got out in cuffs. It was a great feeling, even as a nine year old. I don't even know what the hell out of it. I'm not rewinding it. <laughs> You don't no, like this. No, the thing is, the thing is, he said it was somebody in the house. Yeah. One time I had a sleepover with my friend okay. Mike on a cloudy, dark night. There was a slight drizzle and occasional lightning. We were 13 years old. Mike lived on a dead end with one other house next to it. Across the street was a field surrounded by trees, and his backyard led to a forest. See, I won't even put my Mike kids in situations like that. Much after his dad went to sleep. His dad's room was all the way upstairs. Mike's room was on the lower level of the house by the den. So the den was where we would hang out mostly to just play GameCube. A knock at the backyard window interrupted our game. The blind was shut so we couldn't see outside. Hmm. Mike ran to go open the blind. I told him not to, but he did anyway. As he did, I shut off the TV and lamps because I didn't want to be seen. (laughs) <laughs> now that it was dark in the den and slightly brighter Smart. outside, we could slightly see outside and see that there was nothing but grass in the visible distance. A small flash of lightning confirmed that there was nothing but wet grass in all directions. We sat in the den with the lights off for a while, just waiting for something else to happen. We kept our eyes on the window, expecting somebody to come up to it. Eventually, after what felt like forever later, we turned the TV and lamp back on and pretended it didn't happen. <laughs> that make you more scary. Were open this You're time, too quiet, so often I take nervous glances at the window, just making sure nobody was out there. After getting so absorbed in the game and forgetting to take a glance at the window, there was the second set of knocks. Mike and I both jumped up and looked turn at each other. <laughs> With all the lights on, we couldn't really see outside. At least, not until the flash of lightning outside, just for a brief moment, lit up the night sky, long enough to show the person who was standing at the window. This time, we ran upstairs to Mike's dad's room and pulled him out of bed, screaming at him to get up. (coughs) The three of us ran out to the backyard in our coats and shoes, turning the backyard light on all the way, and also (laughs) taking the long flashlights. There was a buildup of mud next to the back wall of the house where the dirt patches were. And in the puddles of mud were heavy, distinct footprints of boots. We followed the footprints as far as we could, but as the mud faded away, so did the footprints. We searched high and low for anybody. We even went around front and then out into the woods. There was nobody. We all went to sleep, Mike and I in the den. 
on what I, I couldn't let sleep though. I was terrified. Not then. Of course, the blinds were shut to the window and back door now. I know where I would have made Just to sleep. as I was anticipating oh. it, there was a third set of knocks at exactly mm. twelve fifteen. I remember that number. Me and Mike both jumped from the couches and ran upstairs to his dad's room once again. Why did this time he ran outside alone and told us to call the cops. I'll be sleeping in that side. He returned yeah. soaking wet, having found nobody. Uh, I had a piece by the cops came for nothing because there was really nothing they could do. The knocking didn't happen again, though, and I also never slept over Mike's house again. <laughs> Ever since that day, his den just always gave me the creeps. <laughs> Last story. What you hello? can't do this too much so what you'll do if that happened to you like so for example we we you come over with me and travis house so how did that happen um <clears throat> i'll be somewhere i'm not sleeping in no room by myself I'll be in somebody else. They move, they be like, don't worry, you'll be fine. And then, get out my as, face. As soon as the sun rise, I go to my house. Soon as it rise. Between midway or in the middle of the sky? When it's light outside, I'm going to my house. I can't go outside if it's light outside and the street's empty. Like, it gotta be some people outside. I don't outside. care. I care, because ain't nobody out there to witness when I, when I be gone. <laughs> I used to be close friends with the kid named Chris. He moved away across the state when I was eight. Since we never got to see each other anymore, I got my mom to agree to drive me all the way over to Chris's new house in the country for a weekend sleepover. Wouldn't have been me. Pulling onto his property, I already knew country. this was the perfect place to do anything outdoorsy. It was a decent-sized house with nothing but woods in all directions. The first day we didn't do much because I got there late anyway, so we just talked for a while and watched a movie. A couple of times, I'd think that I was hearing sounds coming from below the floor. I would ask him, do you have a basement? Is someone down there? Chris went on to tell me that there was no basement, and that his whole family had been hearing weird noises coming from down there for a few days. And they planned on having some inspector over to check it out. I'd been spitting. <laughs> Come on. The next day was partly cloudy and warm, so we planned on spending most of the day outside. I convinced him to go for a walk. Play house. Just Look at that. I want one of my After house surrounded by that. That's not the actual home. Well. I'm just saying. A picture, bro. No, I'm saying. No just imagine that your house. That almost your grandma say that's boring. So Unless you got we a whole bunch of friends. It, Chris's foot hit something that made a metallic kind of thud sound. His foot hit a rusty old cellar door. He said he didn't know about this. Neither did his dad. He bent down and pulled it open, and it made an ear-piercing squeal as the rusty door turned on the hinges. It was the definition of pitch black down there, but it seemed a ladder led down a very narrow tunnel. See, a little wild. Neither of us dared to step foot down there. Suddenly, a sound echoed up the tunnel, like the sound of something dropping onto a hard floor. And then metallic sounds echoing up the tunnel, getting closer... Closing. As soon as we realized it was the sound of somebody climbing up the ladder, we ran to get Chris's father, who was shocked to see what we had found. He called down there repeatedly for anybody to come out before calling a few of his buddies over to go down with him. Ooh, score. Chris and I were forced to stay inside while the three of them went down there. They went down. They came man. back up five minutes later, all of them visibly shaken and nervous. <sighs> they came back inside and talked to Chris's mom in private. They never let either of us in on what they saw. Apparently, cops showed up as well, but we were forced to stay in Chris's room, so we couldn't watch any of it. In fact, it wasn't until I was 13 that Chris finally texted me one day, telling me what his dad really found down there. Three full body bags tucked away in a corner, an old cot, broken beer bottles everywhere, and the smell of freshly smoked pot. Chris told me that when we heard something down there, we probably heard whoever was living down there, and whoever was responsible for those dead bodies. Hey, he lit him up. Mm. Mm. Man, oh man. That made me want to forever stay in a big city full of neighbors <laughs> surrounding me at all times. Like the country. Yeah. Crazy out there. No, no, no. But anyways, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Let us know if y'all like these Mr. Nightmare videos and y'all want us to react to more of them. They most likely probably cut them off 
And they hear the first story. Ooh. <laughs> all right, man. I'm getting ready to go to bed. Catch up with y'all. The next video, all right? All right, y'all.